Today I'm going to show you guys what happens if you use the wrong size start capacitors in a motor. This right here is a motor that a customer just kind of guessed at what caps it needed. He put in two 216Cs which has a microfarad rating of 216 to 259. So if you're not really aware of the microfarad rating, that's its capacitance value. I guess what it's capable of storing power wise. Uh, this is wrong. I'm going to show you what it starts like. I'll, I'll just give you a little demonstration here. Watch the hop. Just watch how much this motor moves. This is a seven and a half single phase motor. These should have a lot of torque. Hang on, my breaker's tripped. Not, not related to this. I had to do with some other experimentation. I'll spare you the details on that. Here we go. Okay, you might think, that started fine. Nothing wrong with that. Well, sort of. Realistically, that starts probably closer to like what a three horse motor would do. Not real impressive. Let me show you what happens when you use the right caps. So this motor, is actually supposed to have an 815 to a 978 microfarad instead of a 216 to 259 and it should have two of them which this has two of the wrong uh, let's swap these over always discharge your caps just take something with an insulated handle touch across them there didn't seem to be anything stored in them this time but I tell you what, you get it, if you do one that has something in it, they're like a little taser. You're only going to do it once before you become very conscientious of it. Okay. So, wrong caps, out of the way. These were the originals that came out of it. They're the same size as the ones I'm putting back into it. Pay attention to your wiring before you take these apart. I get a lot of these that people like to wire up wrong because nobody's paying attention. So if you're making these cat banks, essentially you got, see if we can show you a little better here. Kind of see how I got it wired here. You're going from this terminal to this terminal, this terminal, this terminal. Essentially, you're just making the opposite sides. And then reconnect. You want to make sure that your two wires going into the motor don't connect to the same jumper. You want to catch the other side of it, otherwise it's just a direct connection. If you open one of these up, it'll probably make sense to you. So here's the correct capacitor now. I'm just going to lay these in here. If you put it all together, uh, you put everything together and you put your tools away, things don't work. I learned that the hard way. Okay, so it's all wired right. It's correct. Watch the hop on it now. Okay. We popped a breaker. This time related to this, but it's simply because that's just a little 20 amp breaker in here. Got to go over to the other test panel to actually run this thing because now when it starts, it takes way more juice because it's it's working like it should now. All right, I got it on a better breaker now. This one's rated at 40. Uh, a motor of this size is typically rated, oh, what is this one? 30 amps, so we're, we're covered. Here we go. Did you see that hop? There's way more, way more energy in there. 
As you can imagine, that could be a nightmare to troubleshoot because you'd have it on your load, you'd start it, and it would just sit there and buzz or hum or who knows what, and it wouldn't take off. And then you'd pull it off, put it on the bench, try to put power to it, and it would take off and go. Well, your start torque isn't there because you got the wrong caps in it. Or potentially, you got a wire that's falling off your caps, you got a bad connection in there. So if you got a motor that's not starting, you might want to just open it up, just see if you got a terminal missing somewhere, rot it off, who knows what. If you're not finding anything in there, it's typically in the back end of the inside of the motor, the centrifugal switch and whatnot. Uh, I'll try and cover that in another video when I get one in here that needs that done. It won't be long because it's harvest season and I only see about 30 of these motors within a month. I do feel the need to add when it comes to the run capacitors, the metal ones, they'll either be oval or cylindrical. Those ones, you need to match up exact. You can't be guessing on those. If you get them wrong, your motor's either going to pull too low of amperage or too high of amperage. Usually it's going to be too high of amperage and you're going to cook the motor. It's going to get hot, it's going to kick out this thermal overload on it, or it's just going to burn up. Don't guess on those. The start caps, if you can't find the right size, it's better to go bigger than it is smaller. Let's not get crazy about it, but try to keep it in a reasonable range. I don't know, maybe 100, 200 microfarad over. Let's not do any more than that if we can help it. Mostly because the run capacitors are in the circuit all the time. The start capacitors are only in it for like a split sec. Once the motor's up to speed, they're no longer in the circuit. They no longer affect anything. wasn't helpful, 